I have only ever managed to fix one Nintendo Switch on this channel. I have purchased another one off of eBay that was listed as faulty for £65. I think it's safe to say this has been one of my most challenging yet satisfying fixes yet. I'll say no more, let's get into it, enjoy the video. Welcome back to the Desk of Madness where we see a new patient on the table that goes by the name of Nintendo Switch A. I actually purchased two of these for a total of £130. Both of them don't power on. Today we're going to be focusing on this one. Let's take it out of packaging and see how it looks. First off, there seems to be a few slight scratches on the screen. Nothing too bad. Doesn't look to appear any deep scratches, which is good. The rails on the sides look clean, no scratch marks. Unfortunately, it's also missing a kickstand, which upsets me every time. How does the charging port look? Okay, so we seem to have quite a big crack here where there's a bit of missing plastic on the device. And it actually looks to be plastic still here around the port, which doesn't look too good. This crack isn't gonna affect the functionality of the port. In fact, the only thing it's gonna do is allow dust to get in, which actually isn't that great. The listing does actually state that the plastic around the USB port is damaged. There are also some scuff marks and scratches on the screen and the rear casing, and it says that the stand is missing. Props to the seller on eBay because it is an accurate description of this unit. All the screws seem to be here as well, and I am amazed at that. I'm gonna press the power button on the device and we're gonna see if it turns on. As expected, it doesn't. Here I have an original Nintendo USB-C charging cable, and this is called an amp meter. This little device will tell me how much draw the switch is getting, and hopefully from that we can kind of tell what the fault is. I'm not actually that good at it, but I'm, I'm trying to get there with experience. So we're gonna plug this in, and what do we get? Oh, <laughs> we get a disco! That clearly isn't good. <laughs> I'm gonna turn the switch over, and we're gonna test the back, just make sure that it's the same, which it is. Now I do recall seeing a video from Northridge Fix. We may have an issue with the M92 chip. Before we just go ahead and replace the M92 chip, I'm gonna take the Nintendo Switch apart and we're gonna check thoroughly for faults just to ensure that that chip is the root cause of this problem. So let's do that now. And there we have it. Straight off the bat, there's a couple of things that I'm noticing. The water damage indicator, which is down here at the bottom, is almost like a dark gray, which I've never seen before. We can also see in this part of the switch here, what looks to be water damage. I reckon the plastic bit from the charger has come off, water's got in, and maybe gone a little bit down here, which has potentially caused a fault in this Nintendo Switch. Let me just take the board out. Now, there are some observations that I wanna make with you guys, but I don't think I can show you until we're under the scope. I've got a feeling someone's worked on this before, and I'll explain why right now. Somebody has definitely been in this device before, and I'm gonna show you. This, from my understanding, is now flux. Look at all of this. Flux on the board, dry flux everywhere. Up here, it's flowed absolutely all over the board. If I didn't know any better, it looks like M92 has already been swapped out. Maybe even the caps up here resold it. We've got a bogey on the board. I've been bamboozled. Again, you can see over this side of the board as well, we just have dried flux. This is around the BQ chip. So this one, I don't know what this one exactly does. Uh, I think it's responsible for some something to do with the charging. But as you can see, there's just flux everywhere on the board. And it's like thick flux as well. Look at this, look. Just being left on the board. They've been in and around the charging port because as you can see, that doesn't look like a factory port. And I'll show you why more in a second. We've got flux around here. And we've also got flux around M92. I don't know why there would be that much flux around here, maybe to do with the charging port, but that's quite a long way for the flux to travel in my opinion. But again, I am only a beginner. There seems to be remnants of flux all over the rest of the board as well. So this is the charging port, and then if we go to the left of it, it's a HAD board by the way. This is the water damage that I was talking about earlier, which I don't know if it is water damage anymore. We seem to have flux over here as well. So whether or not somebody has done work over here around this area of the board, which I don't have a scooby about, it looks very, very possible. We have like another bogey substance here, which is more flux I think. Now let me show you the real beauty of the board. Let's turn over to the back where P13 resides. They have also replaced this chip. I mean there's fluxation to the donation everywhere on this board. Around the filters. Look around the port. There is no solder here and there is also no solder here at all. Like not even a tiny bit. We have solder here, we have solder here. I wonder, my first thought is what about if the charging port needs to be soldered to these, I'm, I'm assuming they, these are ground legs, right? So what about if the charging port needs to have solder here for the charging port to actually work and deliver to the M92 chip, which is on the other side of the board? I mean, is that a possibility? We have a bubble, 
we have a bubble, I repeat, a bubble. These are the times where you would need something called an ultrasonic cleaner, which is something I don't have. I'm gonna grab some magical liquid called isopropyl alcohol, also known as IPA, and I'm also gonna take my toothbrush and just give this whole board a real quick clean. I could heat the whole board up just to melt the flux a little bit and therefore it'd be a lot easier to clean, but I would be here all day. The board now looks a little bit better. I'm not gonna say a lot better because we still have remnants of flux all over the board, but it looks a bit cleaner. I actually don't know where to start. I guess first things first, um, the M92 chip. So we're gonna take a look at this. So this chip here is the one that I was originally talking about when we get a flicker. So I'm just gonna first check that they've soldered this chip correctly because somebody's definitely been in here. I mean, it doesn't, I don't know if you guys agree, but down here, there doesn't seem to be a great connection between this pad and the chip. That doesn't look so great. We just swivel it around to here. That's not on properly, man. I'm not being dope here, am I? That doesn't look like it's on, Chief. You've got what looks to be an inch over this side compared to here, and there's a pad here that doesn't have anything attached to it, no solder or anything. Hmm. Let's check the rest of it. So that just needs to be redone. That side's not too bad. And then this side just seems a bit wonky, I guess, all over the place. I think there's enough solder on those joints though. I'm gonna reflow this chip and just put it right because it's not sat right at the moment. But before that, I'm gonna get my multimeter and just check to see what shorts we currently have because that'll be interesting. So I have my multimeter in continuity mode. So when I touch these two probes, we get a beep. I'm gonna start with the CPU cap, which is this one famously down here. I'm gonna put the black probe on ground and we're gonna test. Okay, that's fine. If this side was shorted to ground, so if we heard a beep here, we'd be in serious trouble and it would be game over. I learned that the hard way recently in another video on my channel. No beep on that one, beep on that side. So we have a beep on this. Don't think that's great. I think there's something wrong with this. And I think that's the P13 cap, which means the chip on the other side of the board, that long rectangular one that we saw also has an issue, but I think that might be relating to this. This one's fine as well. Move on to these ones up here. So they're all ground, the top ones. These ones aren't meant to be ground and they're all fine. This one is fine. And then we just check these two over here. They're fine. And this one down here is fine. So I'm gonna play this confident and I'm gonna reflow the M92 chip. Wish me luck. Here I noticed that the solder joints weren't that great, so I took care of them. In typical Joey style, prepare your eyes. So what I'm looking for is just something different to what we had previously. My cat is meowing. Plugging in the LCD screen and then we're also plugging in the backlight. I highly doubt this is gonna work due to how much flux and stuff was on the board. There has to be more wrong with it. So we're just gonna plug in the power. We take our amp meter, plug it in. We get a zero amp draw, completely zero amps, but that's better than flickering, I guess, right? Let's try it the other way. We get the same zero amp draw. I think this should go up to about 0.46. Then it turns off and then it goes into fast charging. Or it might even go to 0.14 to start with, then it turns off, then it goes to 4.6. And then if fast charging is all good, then it will go up even further from there and sit around 0.78 or so, I think. Could be wrong. Clearly, that's not happening. 
Let's head back to the scope. Just checking around M92 quickly. Even though the joints aren't like fabulous, they're, I think most of them are connected. I'm gonna check for shorts around P13 USB. So again, we're gonna go beep mode, black probe on ground. And if we start with this cap, that's fine. I'll just quickly check the filters, make sure we have continuity through them. We don't have continuity through this one at all. So I think this filter's gone. That one's fine. They're all fine, it just seems to be this one that's not fine. So I'm gonna have to swap that out as well. I'm just gonna check for shorts around M92 again and see if we have the same short, which is this cap here. We still have the short. These caps are still fine, which is good. Whilst I'm here, I'm just gonna fill in these real quick because they haven't been done. Not too sure if it's gonna affect it, but I wanna fill them in. This filter wouldn't work now, would it? Nah. Worth a try, worth a try. I have an identical switch motherboard that I can use the smaller filter from the back of the board and transport it onto the new one. I used a mixture of hot air and my soldering iron. Getting these things off can be pretty tricky because they're so small. One little handshake and you're done for. Now that filter's fine, should we check and see if that short's gone on this side of the board? I thought there was, be there was a beep this side, but there's no beep this side, I can't remember. I wonder if that's done it. I wonder if we're okay. Maybe. I don't know. I'm gonna give it a test. I can't actually remember if that cap is meant to be like that on the other side or not. Here we go. What does the amp meter tell us? Let's go. Come on. We still have 0, 0.00. Back to drawing board. This isn't the board that's faulty that I've been working on. This is a dead CPU donor board, which I literally just took the filter from. Now, I've noticed something around M92. There's a, I think, what looks to be a resistor here. If I go back to the other board, they're the same board make, by the way, HAD CPU 01. And then if I get the other board, HAD CPU 01, and I go back up to M92, there's no component here. I don't know whether or not that's gonna be affecting it, but I'm willing to give it a try and just transfer it over real quick and see if that is the reason. Okay, so the soldering job wasn't wasn't fantastic, but I think we got the job done. I could be wrong, and even though they've got the same board number, maybe that component just doesn't need to be there for whatever reason. I have got that other little cap that seemed to be like on the outside of it. I didn't replace it because that one's still on here. Let's give it a test. This probably isn't gonna work, but we, we try, we go again, we keep going. After this, I'm gonna do more, maybe replace the P, uh, P13 chip on the back of the board. We're not gonna go any screws. Let's see, do we get anything different, even just like, like a slight, Bit of difference here, here we go. 0 0.06, 0 0.07, 11, keep going. 0 0.11 amps, this is different to what we had. 0 0.11 amps, before we had 0, 0 0.00. The backlight's on. I can see the backlight, if I turn this around, it's on. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Oh, I can't flip it over, wait there, wait there, wait. <laughs> I didn't have screws in, flipping it over wouldn't have been the best thing. Let me just put a screw or two in. No, there is just simply no way that that has caused it to work. Oh, I'm really nervous, here we go. Oh, 0, 0.00. We're right back to the blooming start. It says 0, 0.00 now. Oh, 0, 0.07. Oh, oh no way! Keep going, oh it's charging now then, so it's not gonna turn on because I'm gonna guess the battery is that flat. That's why it's 0.11 amps. I'm gonna leave this to charge for five minutes and see what happens. Moment of truth, here we go. We've gone up to 0.67 amps, which shows that it's charging. I'm pretty sure that's fast charging as well. Question is, does it turn on? Does it get stuck on boot logo? Let's find out now. Bosch. Okay, we get the Nintendo logo, that's really good. Please just, okay, yep, that's boot looping, that's good. Nintendo Switch logo. Yes, come on, 30% battery. And we're on the home screen. I've put all of the ribbon cables back so we should have touch functionality. Let's test it. Come on then, let's go man, yes! Let me turn, okay, does the volume work? Let's just check. Yeah, 
Okay, good. I haven't put the heat sink back on yet, so that needs to go on ASAP. Let's just quickly test that Joy-Cons work. Come on, left side, amazing. Right side, amazing man. Would you look at that? What about, okay, so if I, if I take these off now, do they work wirelessly? That's another thing to test. I mean, it looks like down here they are. Let's test it. Yes, oh my God. Wait, can I play Mario Kart? Oh, it doesn't require the game to be in. This is an online purchase? Ah, nice one. I'm not gonna show you this on the screen, but it has found my Wi-Fi. that's amazing. So that means that can connect. I'm really pleased with the fault finding that I've done in this video. Thumbs up if you enjoyed, have a great weekend. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace, come on.